Sage Court Garden, um, which is a historical garden, but also has survived today as a small pocket park in Deptford. And basically, it was in reaction to the forthcoming Converse Wharf development, which is, it well, kind of encapsulates all of the kind of uh, typical problems that we're facing, our growing cities are facing in the 21st century. It's high density, mixed use, luxury development, three and a half thousand units over 40 acres, uh, and yet sits next to the mo one of the most deprived wards in the country, uh, suffering from health inequalities, lack of opportunity, overstretched infrastructure, and certainly a deficiency of open space. So I, as a local resident with a number of others came together to see what were the ways in which new developments like this can help alleviate those problems but also to give to look at new ways in which these developments can have a positive future on the city what you always learn when you go through a process which can be a campaign or it can be delivering um, certain services to the community, whether or not that's working workshops in schools or whether or not that's workshops trying to educate people about a planning application. I think what we tried to look for was to work out new ways in which to empower those communities of which we were part of it. And so it, we educated ourselves about, well, you know, what does a mixed use scheme mean? What does a level of density mean? Uh, and what are the ramifications for we as local residents, but also for the new uh, inhabitants to come into it. So I think, yeah, it was a great big crash course in uh, our planning system, but also in the construction industry itself as well. In terms of what we're talking tonight about poverty and um, the landscape's relationship with it, or the built environment's relationship with poverty, I think what is increasingly known is that there will have to be not only a level, uh, a raising of public awareness, but that needs to transform into political change. And we're really looking at a sort of uh, a very wide regime change. Now, grassroots organizations such as ourselves, uh, we can innovate and we can try new ideas, but it's not until the larger sort of civil society organizations like the National Trust are working with us that we're able to be on the platform whereby we can affect that political change. It's, it's a model of transition of which the, gr the grassroots and the big boys have to work in partnership.